Hello, it's Mike coming at you with another Planet Coaster Park Spotlight. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the video and welcome to Cedar River, created by Unknown Games. Now, this park was created on the Xbox Series X or S, one of the next gen ones. I don't know. It was on one of them. I don't know. But the description for this park reads, This park has been a park that I have been working on for a while now and is finally complete with four coasters and two dark rides. I hope you enjoy the park and if you want to, you should check out my YouTube channel, Unknown Games, where I've uploaded park updates and a park tour of this park. Then there are numerous shout outs to different creators just things that he's used from the workshop but yeah i will make sure to leave a link down below for unknown games so you can go and check him out really really top guy really great content creator and thank you ever so much unknown as well for being such a big supporter of the channel one of the initial ones in the first hundred so thank you ever so much for all of your support and i'm so pleased i'm finally able to do a park spotlight for you but without further ado let's hop into this park and have a look around shall we really excited to get into this one so here we are we've just come out of the entrance tunnel and straight away just as we come in we've got a thank you board just here as well lots of people there that you will recognize so we've got planet plip cam coast creation tv mj games got myself on there as well so thank you ever so much for putting me on there as well and shouting me out in your park i, I really appreciate that but as we come down here so this comes straight down the center of the car park really like this i like the symmetry of it with both sides with the foliage on either side as well now with this being an xbox park this is a pre-filmed video very much like with karina manor that i did a few weeks ago unfortunately xbox park spotlights i can't actually film live i do have to pre-film them and then come back and then voice over them afterwards so the raw reactions aren't quite there but i really like this car park i maybe would have liked to have seen a couple more cars on it it does feel a little bit empty and a little bit lifeless without so many cars on there so maybe if you were just able to come back and just add a couple more on there as well. I do know that your percentage counter is full, but I think I may be able to save you some percentage as we go through this park as well. But we've got this entrance here. Really nice. Once again, just with the symmetry on both sides as well. We've got the ticket booths on either side and then we've got the blocker toilets on either side as well. And we have Cedar River. So the main entrance here and then just going across the top as well, we've got a train. So I love that as well. I love when you have these main entrances with a transport ride that goes through as well. Yeah, great touch. So we come through the barriers just in here. And then just look how wide and expansive this is. Love this. Yeah, looks absolutely fantastic. We've got a food court just here. I love the custom seating that you've done there as well. Just with the table and the benches. Maybe just a little bit more trimming, just potentially, just on there as well. But I had to have a look how you did that wall. And you've actually used kind of like the floor piece, but then turned it sideways. I love that. What a great effect that wall gives as well. We've got the water features just as we come straight down the center. Love it. Water straight away. I'm sure you did that just to appease me. I'm sure you did. And then we've just got the lockers in there as well. Now, I know that they were a workshop item. They came from... I can't remember. Oh, uh, Blitzleon. There we go. I knew I had it written down somewhere. So, yeah, those were off the workshop. Well, as we just come up around here. So, we've got the first aid. Got some more information there as well. And then we've got Cedar River. Just written that. Yep, really nice. And let's go left, shall we? Now, originally, this was going to be something that I was going to address a little bit later on. But whilst we're here, may as well just do it. Just how wide your paths are. It, it scares me to think how much percentage you must have used in this park just on pathing alone. And I genuinely believe that if you were to come back and maybe do a lot of the pathing on a grid, you would actually be able to save yourself a lot of percentage as well. So, as we go around the park, you'll see it a little bit more as well, just how wide some of the path is at areas. But here we come up to the first ride. Unfortunately, with it being an Xbox Spotlight, I can't get these stats for it. So, let's just go for a ride on this and enjoy, everybody.
So there we had Deserts Run, the first ride of the park. What a ride. That was absolutely fantastic. Really nicely done. There were a couple of little tiny issues with it. Like the first bit, you sit there for almost half a minute just before you get that initial launch. So it does need another block section in there or something just so like kind of that triggers. Now, I am not the person to ask about block sections. I'm absolutely useless with them. So I know that M&J Games did a tutorial on how to use block sections effectively. So I highly recommend going and checking that out. But other than that, the ride itself was absolutely sensational. I maybe would have liked to have seen a little bit more with the terrain used around it maybe like kind of bits like kind of where it just comes up and over the terrain or something like that but besides that absolutely brilliant the coaster itself sensational yeah love that so let's hop out the exit uh let's just have a look in here now i believe some of these shop items were uh, from planet plip cam off the workshop but yeah really nice little shop there as well and let's carry on around here. And another thing that I've noticed as well in this park as well, and you'll notice it as we carry on walking around, is the amount of custom fencing that you have used in this park is absolutely insane. The piece count is just absolutely astronomical. So I am assuming that must be also where the percentage is coming from as well. Now, whilst it is really, really nice to do the custom fencing as well, maybe not always at the expense of the rest of the park as well, and just the reason I've just hopped over here as well is what I've done is I'd actually just put a little bit of paint tool here So underneath the train track is like a very solid green I would go through that train track and just put the paint tool just going all the way around it as well Just think of where that train track has started killing the grass as well So maybe just kind of like maybe just make it stand out a little bit more just using that paint tool So we've just got some shops here This park feels very empty despite the fact that there are 9,000 guests in this park 9,000 no there's not 9,000 guests no there's 4,000 mate you can't have 9,000 on a console what am I talking about but I love this flat ride I love the roof that you've done on here again it's a big piece count but it's really effective really really nice job with that yeah that looks absolutely great love that so now what I've done here just to the right hand side is I've just done some paint tool down here for you just to give an effect of what it is that you could do as well just playing around with that paint tool around this foliage area because in the other areas that you've done you they're all a very solid green so as we just kind of like zoom up here just a little bit just so I can give you an example like here for example you've just left it like kind of as a very monotone green so if you just kind of like just go through with the paint tool the same here as well it's just one very set green color so if you just use the paint tool to your advantage and just go through, you can really kind of like make it look more alive as well. But I do like the fact that you put the wooden beams going all the way around that as well. Again, it's a big piece count, but it gives a great effect. So here we go. We're just coming up to our second ride of the park. So we have lightning strike. So let's have a walk up here. So just got this cattle pen cue path walk underneath the track which I really like I like the fact that you've got the lights on there as well so much custom stuff in this park we've got a transfer track just there which we'll have a look at when we get off the coaster see now this appears to be on a grid that cue path that would certainly appear to be but second ride of the park let's go enjoy everybody
So there we have Lightning Strike. Once again, absolutely fantastic coaster. There's nothing wrong with your coaster building at all. Really, really nice ride. Maybe just a tad bit of smoothing, not much. Maybe just a couple of clicks just here and there. But yeah, loved it. I love the, the maintenance area that you've got here as well with the transfer track. Just thinking of that realism, thinking of that detailing. Really nice station build as well. I actually really like the station. Simple, effective, did exactly what it needed to. So let's hop out the exit and let's carry on. This park feels very empty. Despite the fact that apparently there's 9,000 guests, apparently, but despite the fact that the park is full, it feels quite empty. I don't know where all the guests are. But we've got this block of toilets just here. I like that build. Again, simple, effective. Yeah, really nice job. And I love this little area here, this little picnic bench area that you've got as well. Just using the natural grass. So you can just sit there and have your picnic, have your dinner, whatever. Yeah, really nice. And as we carry on, so we've just got this flat ride just here. I like that sign as well, Storm. I like that. Now I believe that was from Flooded Tombs. I might be wrong. I may be wrong in that, I'm not sure. But I love this Q path. Look at all the beams that you've used. Whilst it gives an amazing effect, it does make my little heart break a little bit, just imagining the piece count that you've used. I mean, it does look fantastic though, don't get me wrong. It looks absolutely ace. Oh, where does this go? I'm pretending like I don't know. You know I'm pretending like I haven't filmed this before. I know exactly where it goes. It goes up to the train station. So I've got another coaster just there, but we'll have a quick look at the train station first, just before we carry on. So we've got the train just on the outside. And again, really nice build, once again. So you buy your tickets just there, and then you just hop on the train, goes around the park. So yeah, very nice. And let's carry on. So we're coming up to our next coaster. Tell you what, it's very different recording like this. I'm so used to recording live. So to have it pre-recorded, this is quite bizarre. I haven't quite got my rhythm with it yet. Just feels a little bit off. And one thing I'm going to say to you, Unknown, is I would like to see more elevation in your parks. Like, obviously, the first ride that we went on, Desert Run, and then certainly as we kind of like carry on around the park as well, I did feel that the park was very flat, I would just like to see just more elevation throughout the park because parks are not flat in real life. You don't really get flat parks or flat anywhere, to be honest. You're always going to have these little elevation changes, these little bumps, these little indentations in the ground. And I would just like to have seen more around the entire park, especially when it comes to your coasters as well. Now, whilst the coasters are fantastic, don't get me wrong, they did just need just something else around them as well. Maybe just a little bit more theming. And sometimes just the terrain can just add to it as well. But as we come over here, so we've got the on-ride photos there. You can see you've just got a little tiny backstage area there as well. Again, simple, effective, did exactly what it needed to. We've got all this custom wall around here as well. I love this little area. I love just this whole little section. Feels quite realistic. And we come up to our next ride. So we have Blaze 305. I love the sign. Love the sign. Now, I believe that font, that font there was the one that was by Flooded Tombs, I believe. But another cattle pen queue just as we come up here. An amazing station build. Absolutely love that. Yeah, really nice effect. But third ride of the park. Let's go. Enjoy, everybody.
absolutely fantastic. Of the three rides that we've been on so far, by far the best one. Absolutely incredible, really nice momentum, very smooth as well from start to finish, some great moments of airtime. I just think that was absolutely fantastic. It takes up a really nice footprint as well, very much on the back of the park as well. So like kind of you've got the sight line as you're walking around the park as well. Now, the only thing I would say, what I was alluding to just before we kind of like jumped on the ride as well, is I would have just liked to have seen a little bit more elevation around the park, around the ride as well. But we've got another transfer track here once again. Again, thinking of that realism. Yeah, just looks ace. Looks absolutely ace. Really nice transfer track. Very much inspired by M&J Games. I wonder if you did watch their tutorial on how Michael does his. Because that is a very Michael style transfer track. But as we hop out of the exit and carry on. Now we're coming around to something in a second. That... I had no idea what it was. I didn't know it was there before we came in and it blew my mind. It was it was so good. But just before we get there, we've got these shops and toilets just here. Really nice little architectural style there as well. Just how you've got like got the wall set back and then you've got the pillars that are going around it as well. Yeah, really like that. You've got a little seating area just here. Just so you can watch the coaster go around as well at the same time. And then look at all this water. Oh, I'm in my element. I love it. So much water! But we have Submarine Voyage. Now, I had no idea what this was. Now, I know in the description that you'd said that you'd got the two dark rides, but I'm not going to lie, I didn't read the description until, I'd after, until after I'd filmed the spotlight, so I had no idea. The only thing I would like to have seen is maybe some roof tiles on the floor, because I wasn't sure about the queue path. Because you've got the blue, but you can see the green in the middle, so maybe just if you had some roof tiles and just drop them below, just so you couldn't see it but i had no idea what this was and i came in and i was like oh it's one of these go figure didn't know this was here so let's go for a ride on this and enjoy everybody beautifully done really really nice ride and the fact that you've managed to get that in that little tiny footprint as well like i say i didn't know that was there 
the fact that you managed to get all of that and, and the ride isn't flat either the ride actually goes up and down as well and the fact that you've got all that inside that building it almost looks like a sea life center i'm not sure if they're around outside of the uk so in the uk we've got the sea life center which you like kind of you've got your sea fish your tropical fish like your nemos and things like that and you've got your jellyfish and like sometimes the smaller sharks as well i'm not sure if they're around in europe but yeah looks like one of them but yeah, really nice ride, great job. Look at all this custom fencing just to the side as well. All the way around here, all, those are all individual beams. The amount of beams that you have used for custom fencing in this park just absolutely blows my mind. It must have taken you so, so long to do that. But we've got a wheelie rig just to the right there. We've got all this pirate area now as well. Now, whilst I do like the wooden beam effect, I do wonder if you sacrificed some detailing in the rest of the park to achieve that desired effect. I love it. I think it looks ace. But I do a little tiny part of me does wonder if the rest of the park suffered because you used so many like beams just for a... a a wood effect like around the side of your paths but we've got this uh, boat ride just here now originally i'd kind of like come for a quick zoom around here in the day as well but after i'd done a night zoom around as well i very much realized that this was supposed to be a specific night pov as you come around now because of the length of the spotlight unfortunately we won't go for a ride on it but i really like this great dark ride once again uh, there's a lot of in-game blueprints used but used to great effect and it's never easy building inside either so yeah credit for that i i'm struggling i'm currently trying to build something inside at the moment and i'm really struggling with it so yeah the fact that you've managed to do an entire dark ride inside there yeah great job now as with us coming towards the end of the park ish i thought i'd just keep it at night i love inside here the fact that you can watch the boat ride still come around as you're in the shop as well. I think that's absolutely ace. What an awesome idea. The only thing I would have potentially done is maybe just put some kind of either a fence across the top or something. Or maybe some glass or something like that. But I love the effect that it gave. Really, really great job with that. So as we come around here. And we've got one coaster left to go on. Very dark around here. So we'll just have a quick zoom out just a second and just have a look at the park overhead yeah some really nice lighting in the park as well there are little kind of sections that may be a little bit darker but on the whole park is lit really really well so yeah let's just hop back down again and let's go on this final coaster now yes i do find the entrance but yes i do go the wrong way so i come down here which is completely the wrong way but I did realise and turn back again. So really nice use of foliage around here. This chair plane looks absolutely fantastic. Just with all the foliage around it. Yeah, looks really nice. Yep, yeah, great job with that. And then we have this restaurant here. Now this restaurant is probably my favourite build in the entire park. Uh, for actual building. I think that looks absolutely ace. Really simple, really effective, but an absolutely amazing effect. And at this point, I'd realised that I had completely missed the ride, so I turned round and went back again. So, here we go. Do not climb. I wasn't planning on doing. That person needs to eat. Now, here we go. So, we've got, just got some more seating just here. Got some more shops once again. And here we come down to the entrance now i've never seen this done before and what an awesome effect it's so realistic i don't know why i'd never thought of it it's just putting this like little extra queue path there so when the ride is busy they can just extend the queue in that bit there probably my favorite queue of the entire park as well i love how it comes underneath the coaster yeah really nice effect there as well so we're coming up here and we come up to the final ride of the park. So let's go for a ride on this. Enjoy everyone.
so there we have the final ride of the park the canadian mind buster wow that was absolutely sensational it actually makes it difficult for me to choose which was my favorite ride of the park either blaze 305 or this one I'm actually swinging more towards this one. I just think it was really nicely done. I love how it, like, as you're going through the center of it, you can, like, see both sides of it. I thought the inversions were all really good, like, kind of the banking, the moments of airtime. Perfectly smoothed. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Probably my favorite ride of the park, to be honest. So, yeah, great job. So, there we go. We are just coming down towards the main entrance again. So once again, just with all this custom fencing again. So much. I really do tip my hat. I, I can't even begin to imagine how long it must have taken you to do all the custom fencing in this park. I would have, I would have lost the will like a long time ago. I'm not going to lie to have done this. Oh, hang on. We've got another flat ride just here as well. So we have Lumberjack. I like what you've done with the font, just kind of like tilting it a little bit. But that's the Insanity Ride just there. And what have we got here? So just a few more shops. There's the hotel, the restaurant just down there. And we come back round to the main entrance again. Oh, hang on, what's down here? Just a little backstage area here. Did you need, is, is there something in there? Because I'm kind of wondering if you need the path there, to be honest. Ah, yeah, there's a staff room back there. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I'll let you off. But here we are back at the main entrance again. So, thoughts on the park as a whole? Honestly, the rides are sensational. They're so, so good. There are a couple of little things that I think that you may need to, like, kind of work on or look at addressing maybe in your future parks. I would like to have seen more paint tool used now you have used paint tool but you've not used it everywhere and i think you could really kind of like use that paint tool to your advantage a lot more and bring this park to life a lot more than you have done i think the amount of pathing and how wide your paths are is like that's wider than 10 meters in a lot of places so i think you've double pathed in places as well potentially but i just think it's a little bit too wide in places i think you could just reduce that a little bit and then obviously like kind of the amount of custom fencing that you've got as well whilst it is amazing and i love it i'm just as i said earlier on i'm just wondering if it's worth worth it or not because there's just little aspects of the park where i feel maybe it needed a little bit more potential like maybe just a little bit more detailing here or a little bit more detailing there like the car park just having a couple more cars on it and maybe just a little bit more theming around your rides potentially but i mean these are these are nitpicks if i'm honest because massive thumbs up i i love this park i maybe just would have liked to have seen just a tad bit more but there we go so hopefully you've all enjoyed the spotlight. Let me know down below what you guys think. If you haven't already, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Thank you ever so much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you in a couple of days for another Planet Coaster Spotlight. Take care, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will see you in a couple of days. Bye, everybody.